So when we construct the end center, it's going to be, this center is a little different. We can draw the circle inside the triangle, but it, um, it, we draw it inside the triangle, but we're going to do angle bisectors instead of perpendicular bisector. So the perpendicular bisector is a line that intersects the side of the triangle at the midpoint and it forms a 90 degree angle with that side of the triangle. Here we're just going to bisect the three angles. In other words, we're going to cut angle D in half, we're going to cut angle E in half, and angle F in half. So take take the pointy edge and just kind of dig into D. How far this needs to be doesn't matter. Now the two line segments associated with angle D are DE and DF. So what I need to do is I'm going to dig that in and I'm just going to make a little arc on DE and I'm going to make a little arc on DF because that is angle D, right? Angle D has these two lines. Don't adjust the distance. Leave the distance the exact same. So I'm going to make a little arc on DE because that's the line segment that's part of angle D. Right? And I'm going to do the same thing on DF. Then, where these two intersect, I'm going to make a little point right here. I pushed down too hard. But I'm going to make a little point right here and I know that it's that those are going to cross like somewhere over here, so I'm going to make a little arc outside like that. So the only thing I'm doing is I'm intersecting and I'm making a little arc on the outside, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the arc on DF. I'm going to make a I'm going to put my pointer right here at this intersection, and I'm going to make a little arc out here where they like that. See how I'm doing that? Can you see? I'm just making a little arc right here. So now when I do that, there's an intersection of these two arcs out here. Do you guys see that? I'll give you guys a second to get that done. And then, if I draw a line from the angle D out to this point, see how I've got this? If I draw, and I'm going to draw my line very light. From here out to here, very light. You'll barely be able to see it. That is an angle bisector. Okay? So I'm going to erase these because my lines got a little dark because I was trying to show you something. So now I've bisected angle D into two equal congruent parts. In other words, this angle and this angle are congruent, and they're exactly one half of the total angle D. We'll darken that in in a second. So now, what angle do you guys want to bisect next, E or F? F? All right. So I'm going to do the exact same process. F shares EF and DF. So I'm going to make an arc. I'm going to adjust my thing a little bit. Now, now that I've adjusted this, I'm never going to touch this compass until I finish this angle bisector. So I'm going to cross right here, and then I'm going to cross right here. The reason I'm going to do that is because this line and this line are part of angle F, right? So I'm going to cross here, and I'm going to cross here. Then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make an arc somewhere out here, okay? And then from this arc, I'm going to make a line right here. 
that creates an intersection of the two arcs. And if I draw a very light line from here to here, I'm going to create an angle bisector for F. So this is my angle bisector for F. And what that means is that this angle is congruent to this angle, and we've cut that directly in half. Now notice that the two lines cross, so I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to darken it right up until they cross. So there's this one, and then from here to here, I'm going to go over it and just make it a little darker. Now this should be the end center. In other words, when I bisect the angle E, that line that I draw should cross right through here. Does that make sense? I'm going to go through and lightly erase these arcs because I just don't want to get confused. There's a bunch of arcs everywhere. I'm going to leave them there so I know where the, you know, what's going on, but I'm going to get rid of some of the extra just because I don't want to be confused. And if, after you've practiced this a while, you'll make the tiniest arcs. It's really kind of cool. And you'll have, you'll, like, Mr. Adams is over-exaggerating some of these arcs so you guys can get a feel for how to do it. But I can make very tiny arcs and construct this, and you can barely even tell where stuff is. But you've got to be able to see what I'm doing. So, All right, so what do I do to bisect the angle E? the same thing I've done for D and F. So I'm going to take my pointer, I'm going to kind of dig it in right at the angle E, create my little hole in my paper, kind of, and I'm going to make an arc on ED, and I'm going to make an arc on EF. That's going to create an intersection here and an intersection here. Now from those two intersections, I'm going to I'm going to create some arcs that will be outside of the triangle. So I'm going to have an arc here. And then over here, I'm going to do my other arc. Okay, so I have this intersection right here. Alright, so when I go from E down to this thing, notice that it'll go. Now, you know what? If you're not perfect, obviously Mr. Adams has been doing this a long time. But if you're not perfect, you'll draw like a little triangle. If you draw a teeny tiny triangle, your in center is in the center of that little teeny tiny triangle. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to clean this up. Now, I bisected the angle C, so that means that this angle is congruent with this angle. Okay? Now, I'm going to clean this up a little bit because we're going to do one last thing. Now, the in center, I'm going to, I'm going to erase some of these things a little bit, very lightly. Erase them because I really got to... To do the circle, I'm going to have to draw some more stuff. So I'm just going to lightly erase all this stuff. So kind of make it look like that. This right here is what we call the in center. So this is the in center. Go ahead and label that accordingly. Okay. Now this will draw a circle inside the triangle. And we could cheat when we draw it. 
technically what you want to do to find the radius you've got to you've got to make sure that the pencil doesn't go outside but I'm gonna see how I've got this going a little bit outside the triangle just to just a hair outside the triangle so from the in center I'm gonna measure this going just a hair outside the triangle see how that goes just a little bit outside the side and I'm gonna make an arc that intersects here and here you see that so right here I have an intersection and right here I have an intersection that's what I need and then from those two points I'm gonna draw another arc notice that I didn't change the distance of the compass I'm just gonna draw out here and then from here I'm gonna do the same thing and I have another intersection so this intersection occurs right here now I'm gonna draw a line from these two dots and this creates what we call a perpendicular intersecting line or whatever so I've constructed a line that goes through my in the uh, in center and that is um, perpendicular to the in center now if I take my compass and I go from the in center to this point right here and it's kind of hard to see see how I'm going from my in center I gotta get it just right see how I've got that set up if I draw a circle with that measurement oops oh my compass is falling apart these small circles are hard to draw but if I draw a circle from that point uh, the pointer kind of dug a hole in the paper it'll draw a circle inside the triangle okay and if you repeated that process of making a, a perpendicular intersecting line um, on this triangle and on this triangle those would be equidistant because they are the radius of the circle so the in center is equidistant from the sides of the triangle and the circumcenter is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle so we did two examples yesterday of this and there are two different applications so the one application we did for the circumcenter was the food stand right equidistant from the carnival attractions which were what were they bumper cars uh, a ferris wheel and carousel right and the second example that we did for the in center was um, a, a swing set in a playground that has a fence but the shape of the playground is triangular okay are there any questions for mr. Adams all right I need one volunteer to 